Who's a good boy? Today we will build a replica of the iconic 1926 K2 London phone booth. To get started, I printed out an orthographic view in black and white to have a reference for measurements. The top of the phone booth has a complex curve, so I began by creating an underlying support to stretch a thinner piece of EVA foam over. Once the structural part of the roof is complete, I use a ball to stretch 4mm foam to fit the curve of the roof. I glue and trim the foam as needed and then use a Dremel to smooth out any rough edges. And no matter how delicious EVA particles are, I don't recommend letting any of them get into your lungs. Fine plastic tubing is used to frame the top edge of the foam booth. Harbor Freight foam which is not as dense as EVA foam, is used in areas that don't require high density foam. Next, I use small square dowel rods to create window panes and super glue them together. To create the illusion of wood trim, I hold a box cutter at a 45 degree angle and make angled cuts. I carefully place the windows and print the word telephone on paper to make it thin enough to be illuminated from the interior. After assembling the base, I use a punch to drill holes in the corners and glue dowel rods into place to give the phone booth its shape. I used weed eater line as a substitute for trim molding and cut doors and windows out of EVA foam. The foam that was cut at a 45 degree angle is used as trim molding. After the windows and doors are assembled, I glue them into place. I found some small hinges that worked great as small hinges. Next, I attach a magnet to the inside of the phone booth and a small piece of metal on the door to keep it closed. Using a small Dremel bit, I carve the crown logo and add LED lighting to the interior of the phone booth. I run the wiring to the base where the batteries are installed. A heat gun is used to create lines on a panel that goes inside the booth. Then I make the telephone. I use the leather punch to drill holes in the EVA foam and use an X-Acto knife to remove the remaining material. Small squares are cut out for the phone buttons and they are glued into place with the help of an X-Acto knife.
After a couple coats of primer, I removed the masking tape and began painting the phone. I add black paint to the crown and use gloss varnish on the phone's receiver to make it shiny. Before placing the phone booth floor into position, I weather it to give it an aged look. I print several flyers and posters on plain paper and glue them into place to add to the authenticity of the booth. The windows are weathered with gray acrylic paint and a wash of black and burnt sienna acrylic paint is added to the phone booth. Finally, I glued the phone into place and take some beauty shots. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of making this London phone booth. I enjoyed making it.